Hi, this is Andy, and this video is Lord I Lift Your Name on High. And this song is basically a G chord, a C chord, and a D chord. So if you can play those three chords, you'll be fine. Okay, now what if you don't know those chords, or what if you're not very fast at switching between those chords, but you still want to join in with the praise and worship band, and you want to play the song, but it goes by too fast and you can't move your fingers fast enough. Okay, well this video is for you because what I'm about to cover is the easy version of the song. Here we go. So at the beginning of the song, the band's playing a G chord. Okay, that's three fingers. What we're going to do is we're going to select only the lowest sounding note from that chord, which is the note G, and we're just going to play that note. And that's it. Nothing else. We're not going to play the full chord. We're not going to hit all the strings. We're just going to play only the note G. Okay, and here it is. It's third fret on the thickest string. So count it up. One, two, three. Make sure you're using your third finger. So third finger plays the third fret. And it's on the thickest string. Now in guitar lingo, we call that the sixth string because we count the strings in reverse order. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is string six. Okay, now if you get uh, a fuzzy sounding note like this, then your finger is not close enough to fret three. You want your finger to be so close to fret three that you're literally touching the third fret, but not directly on top of it though, just right next to the fret, as close as possible. Okay, now if you have trouble hitting the right string with your pick, then my um, recommendation is this. You might be um, like a baseball player that's taking a baseball bat and swinging at the ball. Maybe sometimes you connect, maybe sometimes you miss, maybe sometimes you hit the wrong one. Okay, we don't want to play that way, so what you're going to do is you're going to take your picking hand, you take the side of your hand, your palm right here, and you just lay it right on the bridge of the guitar. So you're resting your arm and your hand on the bridge of the guitar. Now we're going to play just by operating the thumb and the fingers. We're not going to move the arm or the elbow or the wrist or the hand. We're just going to move the knuckles. And so you can play that low note very easily and you can find it without even looking down. You don't have to swing your arm. You don't have to approach the string from outer space. In fact, the best thing to do is take your pick and set it on the string. When your pick is on the string and you can feel that you're solidly on the string, okay, then play. So you always play from a position of touching the string first. Okay, now after you're done playing the note, leave your hand resting on the bridge of the guitar. Don't take it away because the moment you take your hand out and you put it up in space, Okay, now you're swinging again. So just leave your hand resting on the guitar at all times, all the way through the whole song. Okay, so we covered the first note, which is a G. Third fret, sixth string, that's a G. Okay, remember that. You don't want to refer to it as that one note, or this note, or that note over there. That's not going to work, because you'll show up to church band practice and the worship leader will say play a G and you'll go do a what and you'll be lost and you'll say where do I put my finger and then everyone will roll their eyes and laugh at you so remember that this note is a G that's how I'll always refer to it I will not say play that one third fret note over there I'll say play a G so you have to memorize that this is the note G okay moving on let's cover the next note the next note's a C. Okay, a C is also played on the third fret. One, two, three. Make sure you're using your third finger. But this time it's on the fifth string. So, one, two, three, four, five. Fifth string up from the floor. So, boy, that note is not very far away from the last note we just played. So, so far in the song, we've played a G and we've played a C. Boy, those notes are right next to each other. That should be easy. So make sure, of course, you rest your hand on the bridge of the guitar 
and you set your pick down on each note before you play. So set your pick down on a G, play. Set your pick down on the C, play. When you practice at home, you should do that. Don't play a note swinging from the air. Play the note by resting your pick on the string, then play. Rest your pick on the string, then play. Okay, we've covered a G, we've covered a C. There's only one note left, and that's the note D. Here we go. So D is an open string. Okay, an open string means you didn't press any fingers down on the fretboard. You just hit a plain old string. No frets required. You can do it with one hand. Okay, so that's the fourth string. One, two, three, four. Fourth string from the floor. Okay, so here we go. We're going to rehearse all three notes. So set your pick down on a G and play. Set your pick down on a C, play. Set your pick down on a D, play. Okay, now we're not done because we have to go back to C again and play that note one more time. Okay, notice I said go back to C and play it one more time. Remember, C is third fret on the fifth string. I will not be referring to go back and play that one third fret note, you know, that one note over there. I won't do that. I'll say play a C. So you have to memorize where the letters are. Okay, well, let's rehearse the whole four note pattern. Here we go, starting over. First, play a G. Now, play a C. And then, open D. Then, return to C. Okay, let's repeat. Start it over again. G, C, D, C. Repeat again. Do it one more time. G. Is your hand resting on the bridge? C. Hope you're using your third finger. Open D. Back to C again. Let's play it once more. G. C. D. C. Do it again. G. How many times are we going to do it? Doesn't matter. We're going to do it over and over until it starts to seem easy. By about 1,000 repeats, you'll be playing this song with your eyes closed. Okay, so I challenge you to do this song 1,000 repeats. Okay, so might take you a while. You might have to do a hundred repeats a day until at the end of ten days you've got your thousand repeats in. At that point this song will be very easy for you. Okay now we're going to add in a drum track. So every song has a beat. Every gospel song, every modern Christian tune has a beat. Can you think of a song that doesn't have a beat? I can't either. Okay so Every time we practice, we should practice with a beat. If you're not playing with a beat, then you're not really getting ready for a real situation. So, we've got our drummer playing along, and we're going to rehearse the notes along with him. Okay, and we're going to hold out each note for a long time so that you have plenty of time to get ready to play the next note. So, we'll hold each note for about four seconds, or four beats. So here we go. We're going to start with G, and I'm, I'm going to count you in. One, and two, and three, and four, and G. Two, and three, and four. Switch. C. Two, and three, and four. Switch. D. Switch, C, and two, and three, and four. Switch, G, and two, and three, and four. Switch, C, and two, and three, and four. Switch, D, and two, and three, and 
four, and C, two, and three, and four, and G. Good, keep it going. Count by yourself this time. C, you count to four. It's pretty important that you learn how to count to four beats by yourself. Nobody's going to count them for you. Hold each note for exactly four beats. Tap your foot. Okay, and then we'll return to the original note G, and we'll end the song. Okay, there we go. So that song's in the key of G, meaning it starts on G and it ends on G. G is the most often played note, and G is probably the most important note. It's the only note that makes the sound, the, the sound of the song sound complete. So always end on G when you're done. Okay, so now we're going to double time it. So we're going to play it twice as fast. Here we go. A one, two, three, four. G, two, three, switch. C, two, three, four. D, two, three, switch. C, two, three, four. G, two, three, four. C, two, three, four. D, C, two, three, four. G, you count. You count the four. It's all right to rewind this video and practice it some more with me. Okay, but for now, let's wind it up. End on G, of course. That's good. Okay, I sped up the drum machine, so we're going to go a little faster. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Let's end on G. Good job. Okay, now we're really going to speed it up. Now I'm going to make you switch every two beats. So you'll have to uh, change a lot faster. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three, four.
If you mess up, just keep going. Join in with me. The rest of the band is not going to stop and wait for you if you miss a note. They're just going to keep going. And so am I. So you have to jump in where we're at. It's alright to miss a note. Just come in on the next one. Okay, if you need more practice, just rewind this video and start me over again and take it from the top again. Practice some more. Again, this is all you do throughout the whole song. You just play this cycle of notes the whole time. One more time. Of course, end on G. There you go. All right, so now let's add more to it. Now that you can play all the notes and switch fast, let's add more rhythm. So this song kind of has what uh, what musicians would call a push beat. It's kind of a hiccup beat. It sounds like this. Okay, we're going to learn that. So you play every note twice. First note is right on the drum beat. Second note is not exactly on the drum beat. That's why it's a little tricky. You kind of have to learn this one by ear. Bum, 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 bum. Notice I play the note and then a split second later the drum hits. So the second note does not fall on the drum beat. It falls a split second before. That's called a push beat. Let's go for it. A one, two, three, four. Bum, 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 bum. Very good. Okay, now in this last section, I'm going to explain a little bit of something that's tricky. If you don't get this right away, that's fine. At least you can play the song all the way through and sound good. So this is just a small subtlety that you can add when you're ready. So we're going to play that push beat again. But then we're going to choke off the sound of the guitar and stop all the sound so it goes to dead silence. Okay, and I'm going to teach you how to do that. So first, obviously, you're going to hit the G twice. And then you're going to take your pick and the palm of your hand and you're going to land on the strings. So by taking your pick and putting it on the strings, you chop off all the sound. Now the question is, which string do you want to put your pick on though? Well, you are playing the sixth string, so logic probably tells you, well, I'm going to put my pick on the sixth string. That'll stop the note. You're right, it will stop the note. However, it doesn't prepare you to get ready for the next note though, because the next note's on the fifth string. So I'd hate to have you land your pick on the 6th string and then have to hurry up and get your pick ready to play the 5th string. That would be a little awkward. And so instead what we're going to do is we're, we're going to play the 6th string and you're going to take your pick and you're going to put it on the 5th string. Notice it cuts off the 6th string because by putting your pick on the 5th string your thumb touches the 6th string. So not only did you put the pick on the string you're about to play, but you also chopped off the previous note. That works great on the first note. So play string six, land your pick on string five. You're ready for the next note.
Okay, same story here. You're going to play the fifth string, and you're going to land your pick on the fourth string. Okay, and then I bet you know what we're going to do next. We're going to play the fourth string, but we're going to land our pick on the fifth string. Okay, now what cuts off the music this time? Well, it was your index finger. Touch the fourth string a little bit there. Okay, I don't think you should try it with this drum beat though, because it would be a little too fast for you to practice if you're just learning this technique. So it, this drum beat is pretty fast, see? Okay, too fast. Let's slow it down. Okay, here's our slower drum beat. So we're going to practice landing the pick on the string. Here we go. Get ready. One, two, ready, go. making a chopping sound like that. Put your pick right on the string. Smack the strings. Good job.